I mean, once again? Again? Even I saw a vlog clip of me and my cousin who was, I don't know, probably 12 or 13 at the time. And we were, you know, I was doing the birds and the bees talk. I, dumb, sh gross shit. And I remember a few years ago, I reached out to her mom, my aunt, and I was like, I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I can't believe I did this. Like, this is insane. I can't believe I talked to, you know, my cousin like that. Ah, uh, Wow! Boppity beppity, everyone. Boppity shoopity screw my nooples, everyone. I love blah, 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 blah. Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone, episode 160. Yes, I said it. It's 160. It's 160. Now listen to me. Just listen for a second. Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card, but you'll find out anyway because we'll talk about it. Ba-boom. Oops. Put it on the floor. <laughs> Pick it up. Okay. All right. I get it. Everyone's in trouble in 2020. Everyone's in trouble. There's COVID-19. There's a hurricane coming. There's... uh. What the hell else was going on? I can't even remember, dude. I can't even remember what's going on in 2020. There's just so much shit happening in 2020. You know? First it's Chris D'Elia. Then it's Jenna Marbles. Now it's Shane Dawson. I mean, come on. Here's the Del Russo, people. I understand... I understand what that what Chris D'Elia did is unacceptable, if it is true, okay? And according to the DM receipts, it is true, okay? And it's unexcusable, and, uh, you know, but it's not like... I can get on a lot of shit for this, but Chris D'Elia didn't do the deed, okay? He danced around the the, the facility, <laughs> you know. He strutted his stuff. He showed his peacock feathers. But when he found out that the age of the of the young lady was under the age of eighteen, he did not pursue. All right, but we're not talking about Crystal. I want to talk about Shane Dawson. Specifically, for the most part, um, Shane, I understand why you're mad at Shane. I 100% understand why you're mad at Shane. But here's the thing, folks. I grew up watching Shane Dawson on YouTube, as did a lot of people. The people we're seeing mad at Shane Dawson did not grow up with Shane Dawson have never watched Shane Dawson back in the day. They are just going back, looking at his old clips, and, you know, taking... No, oh, there's nothing left in here. There's, God, there's nothing... If I, hold on a second. I'll be right back. I'll be right back, people. BRB. Out. Like, God damn it, folks. I hate drama. I can't stand it. But I gotta I gotta say something about Shane Dawson here. YouTube's my guy. YouTube's my brother. YouTube's me. I love YouTube. And Shane Dawson was a part of uh, my my fucking life growing up. Look how greasy he is in this photo. He's all sweaty and greasy. <laughs> but, okay, so back in the day, Shane had a lot of characters, and he did a lot of, you know, sexualized comedy. 
And yes, he did use children. Alex G. Zoll. Is that her name? And then his cousin was in a lot of his stuff. But it was all consensual. They all knew what was going on. But the biggest point we have to take into consideration here is the fact that it was in like 2007, 2008, 2009, even 2010 probably. I can't remember exactly. It was a different time. That type of comedy was acceptable at the time. And if you lived in that time, no one found that stuff offensive, so people would do it. This goes for anything. We got to stop looking at what people do in the past and assume that's still who they are to this day. Times change and people change and ideas change. And as long as Shane Dawson has changed and admitted he has changed, then why can't we accept that? You know? We accept people who come out of the criminal system or out of, uh, out of, the, out of the jail, you know, whatever. Criminals who were did unexcusable things in the past, they go through rehab and they come out on the other side a different person. We accept them. Why can't we accept Shane Dawson? Why can't we accept Jenna Marbles? I'm not saying accept Chris D'Elia just yet, but I'm saying... Shane Dawson and Chris and uh and and Jenna Marbles they don't deserve this cancellation. I can't stand people getting canceled for shit like this. It's not necessary. Holy moly, bro. <laughs> Shane Dawson. Now, here's the other thing. Jaden Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Could you imagine being in this family? But anyway, I'm not mad at these guys and gals. All right? So, Jaden Jaden and Jada, you know who they are. Fucking Will Smith's wife and son. Jaden Smith... Uh, Will Smith's son, okay? There's also Willow Smith, which is Will Smith's daughter. God damn it, this is hard to talk. But anyway, Jaden said, Shane Dawson, I am disgusted by you. You sexualizing an 11-year-old girl who happens to be my sister is the furthest thing from funny and not okay in the slightest bit. This man was also doing blackface on the regular. As the youth, we need to support creators who support us and our morals. This is not okay. Yeah. Okay, Jaden? Look, I agree with you, Jaden. This type of shit nowadays is not excusable. We would never let that shit fly nowadays. But back then, nobody cared. Okay? It was a different time. We didn't understand the things that we understand nowadays. Nobody cared. It was funny. It's not funny nowadays. But I will let them slide. I'm no authority on any of this, but I personally will let them slide because it's their family. Understandable. You don't do that shit to family, all right? And Jada says to Shane Dawson, dot, 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 I'm done with the excuses. All right? I don't know what Shane can do to make it better to the Smith family. Okay? But for the rest of the world, I think Shane Dawson is uh, ex- uh, should be accepted. You should accept his apology, okay? He, If you grew up with Shane Dawson, you know that he never, ever had any intention of being a racist or to just hurt people in general. 
he was just trying to be funny and he would and his style of comedy was super outlandish and off the charts and unique and again like i said it was a different time don't don't shit on him for what he did in the past and the same thing goes for Jenna Marbles like not even 24 hours before Shane uploaded his video Jenna uploaded her video titled a message you know where she outlines all the stuff that she did where she did blackface doing a uh, Nicki Minaj impression and she also did like this rap song where she kind of like you know did a a stereotypical Asian accent but it's you know it's all about context it's always been about context and nowadays it's not about context 2020 is such a goddamn shit show it feels like we're living in a parody of life you look at like the other day I was just there was the, the, like there was these commercials on YouTube you know like mid-roll ads of I don't know it was like a furry commercial promoting furries but it was also like LGBTQ at the same time and that's fine you know there's nothing I don't care about that do whatever whatever you know but it's just strange to think about that if that commercial was to be played back in like 2008 when these people were making these videos, we would have looked at that commercial and been like, what the fuck is this? This is 100% not real and it's just some sort of comedy skit. But, um, you know, today that shit's accepted. And we we understand it and we accept it. But don't shit on, you know, these people. They never had bad intentions. They just, they were growing up in the times that they grew up in. And that's what was normal. So what, for the people who are shitting on these people, take a look at what you're doing right now in your life. What's going to happen 20 years from now when you look back at this time? What are people going to shit on you for doing right now? Because you know it's going to happen. Every decade, it seems people are looking back to the past to find the shit that they can use against people. And we didn't see any of this coming in 2019. 2020 came around, and it was just an absolute disaster between the riots, the coronavirus, the cancellations. There's just shit on top of shit on top of shit, and it doesn't stop. It seems like the 2020s can be compared to the 1930s. Where shit starts to go downhill, the economy goes to shit, everyone's losing their jobs, people are rioting, people are protesting, people are getting cancelled, people hate their president, people hate their prime minister, the world hates each other, no one can agree on anything, there's opposing sides, no one can come to a common ground, and it's going to lead to a war, just like it did in the early 20th, 20th century. 20th, 21st, 20th century. <laughs> yeah. Okay? And then a war is going to happen. All right? We're going to settle whatever differences we had. Whatever side's going to win, we'll win. And then we'll have a few decades of just, like, peace and tranquility. Uh, You know, being satisfied over the fact that we are not going through hardships anymore and we'll at least take the time to agree with one another. 
It seems like this is a trend throughout human lives. After a war happens, we're we become peaceful and and you know we try to get along, we try to do things for the benefit of everyone, and then new generations come along, and then new generations, and then new generations, and those generations don't grow up with their parents telling them what it was like living in war times, and you know people become complacent and uh, privileged because they don't have the hard times. They just grew up with good times, and their parents grew up with good times, and even their parents grew up with good times. So it gets to a point where people just start complaining about shit that's just basic, basic, basic problems. And people feel like their life is tragic and a tragedy. They don't realize how hard it once was. So they complain over every little thing, like shit like this, and then people get canceled. For no reason. And then it just leads to another war. So that we can. Appreciate the things that we do have access to. And the cycle continues. So like I said. I wouldn't be surprised. If we end up. Having another world war. It's unfortunate that it has to come to that. But it seems like that's where it's heading. What does it got to take to get people to just understand these things that I just laid out? Why? Why? I don't get it. It makes you makes you wonder if like some of these conspiracy theories are real. Is there one group of powerful individuals out there who are completely manipulating the media to get the general public to rage against whatever so that they can have opposing sides and then They can send someone in to take over and dominate because they have the uproar. It sucks, dude. It almost makes you wish that you could just go back to the good old days where you just lived off the land. You pick some berries, you chop some wood, you go fishing. Maybe you trap a rabbit one night. You make some rabbit stew. You drink out of the out of the spring nearby. You relax by a waterfall. And you got no neighbors. No one knows what's going on else out there in the world. You're just sitting in your cabin by the fire. There's no drama. The only drama you have is trying to stay alive. Stay away from those bears and those cougars, you know? But we don't have that. Our lives are too simple. I mean, our lives are too complicated. Not simple, they're complicated. We have complicated lives. There's too much going on. And the things we needed to you know, help ground ourselves, have been eliminated. We don't have threats anymore. We have tweets. And we have YouTube expose videos on each other over shit that doesn't matter. Yes, I understand these videos that Shane Dawson and Jenna Marbles mate were hurtful. But I got to keep stating over and over again, it was over 10 years ago. However long ago it was, when they made that content, it was acceptable. They wouldn't have made it otherwise. It was acceptable. 
And no one cared about it back then. Sure, there were groups of people that maybe found it uh, disheartening or racist or whatever. But you got to understand that these two individuals can look past that and understand it was wrong. And that is enough. That is enough. I don't understand why that's not enough. If they understand what they did they're wrong, that if they understand what they did was wrong and they are never going to do it again and they feel like shit and they hate that person and they disassociate from that person, how is that not enough? Why do we need to shut them down and completely eliminate them? They're not bad people. They never had bad intentions. Ever. And you can't sit here and tell me that you individuals who shit on these people have never done anything questionable in your life. Every single person on this planet is not perfect. And I don't know why we're all trying to be that way. You know you're not perfect. You know that these people are not perfect. The only reason why you're not getting called out for your shit is because you don't have a platform like these people do and you're just jealous of their shit. Shane Dawson and Jenna Marbles have a massive platform. Millions and millions of subscribers upon millions of views daily. On top of all their other social media networks, most of what they do in their life is put online for millions of people to see. If millions of people saw the shit that you people do, the people who are complaining about this shit, then you would be called out for whatever bullshit you do as well. It doesn't matter. You can look at any celebrity and find shit on them. It's just when it gets pushed in a certain direction is when people have an uproar. And yes, there are specific cases where you definitely need to cancel people. But in this situation, Shane Dawson and Jenna Marbles are good people and they deserve to continue to grow on YouTube. They're not who they used to be. And they're not hateful people. Okay? But like as for Jada Smith and Jaden Smith and Willow Smith and even Will Smith, the whole Smith family, they have a right to be mad. They definitely have a right to be mad. But uh, again... They need to recognize that Shane admits he made a mistake. He made a mistake. He didn't get it. He was young. He was in his early 20s. We don't have life figured out by then. Our brain's not even developed by then. Yes, shit on him. But let him grow. I don't get it. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. Oh, I hate pipes, dude. It's so harsh on the throat. This podcast was meant to be a place... For me to escape for a minute and try to be funny, try to be a little bit of a comic, Com <laughs> try to do a little bit of comedy, you know? And most times I do. But 2020 is sending me down a path where I feel like I need to express just my opinion on how I feel about these things. So, 
you know, if this were anyone else, I would have just not talked about this. But the fact that it's Jenna Marbles and Shane Dawson, I have to talk about it. Because this podcast is an expression of how I feel about YouTube. It's an expression about how I've been on YouTube forever. And I feel... This is going to sound stupid, but I have some sort of connection to these people. Because I grew up watching them. It's not like a TV show. When you grow up watching YouTubers, you're involved in their life. And everything they do. They vlog about all their shit. You see them go through divorces. You see them go through new relationships. You see them, you know, go through all the hardships, all the ups and downs. And I can for the most part say that Jenna Marbles and Shane Dawson never meant anyone anything ever they never meant any wrong or harm to anyone that was weirdly worded but you know what I meant uh yeah I mean obviously I don't know them personally on a real personal level. But from what I've seen over the years, there's no way they meant any harm from this. And if you can provide proof that they actually meant harm from this, then yeah, I'll switch sides. But there's no proof. All the proof you have is the fact that they made the video. And if you don't understand their intention... And if you don't understand the context, and if you don't understand the year that that was produced, then why should that be a valid argument against these people? It really shouldn't be. They don't deserve this. And the fact that Jenna Marbles, you know, the fact that Jenna Marbles came forward and just produced this herself this video herself, the video titled A Message herself, shows growth, shows that she understands, shows that she's moving forward. Same with Shane Dawson. Uh. They took the opportunity to express how they feel before other people just completely canceled them. And yet... She's still leaving YouTube. And I don't know what Shane Dawson's going to do. Because everyone's still shitting on him. If you go to his video and read the comments, we're seeing a lot of people jumping on this bandwagon of typing in depression and anxiety isn't a reason to sexualize children, Shane. People are just copying and pasting that over and over again. Okay. Yes, he sexualized children in a comic comedic way. And like I said, it's not excusable. It's not right. Shouldn't have been done, especially nowadays, but it wasn't done nowadays. It was done back in those days. And like I said, it's not that it was, you know, right to sexualize children, but it was the way he did it back then in a comedic way where it was just thought of as funny. It was just a joke. It wasn't real. He doesn't believe the things that he did. It was a joke. We can't joke about things anymore. What's going to happen to stand-up comedy? Why can't we joke? This might be a short podcast because I really just wanted to address this stuff. We're only 31 minutes in, maybe even less than that because of all the shit that I have to cut out. And when I say shit that I have to cut out, I'm talking like when I leave to go grab this and when I, the intro, I kind of fuck around for a bit. I got to cut that shit out. But anyway, I feel like I said enough. 
about these two. Whether you agree or disagree with me, I don't care. Shit on me all you want. But just think about it. Think, imagine if Shane was like your brother. Or a really close friend of yours. And that's kind of how I think about these people. Don't just cancel people. Unless they truly deserve it. Unless they truly deserve it. Okay, why don't we liven it up a bit here? Wow! Let's liven it up! Can we even liven it up? Because no one cares, really. Nobody cares about the hairs. I want to start this off, since we're talking about things that happened in the past. Um, do you remember those vines? Maybe they weren't even vines. They were just like... Yeah, maybe they were vines. I think they were. Yeah, they definitely were vines. There was this vine of like these kids talking to the making fun of this other kid and he's got like glasses on and he's like you're disrespecting a future army soldier you remember that one and then there was the other one where there was like this crazy kid with spiked hair (laughs) and he was just screaming and they'd throw basketballs at his head and he'd be like yeah (laughs) just loved getting hit in the face well let me show you something that might just blow your mind because it blew my mind I don't know if it's true. I don't know if these videos are true. But if they are true, then goddamn, life is so weird. Let's watch these. Just, let's just watch these. Let me full screen this. Oh, shit. There's music. Hold on. I'm going to have to mute this. Probably don't remember my vine. But don't recognize me. You probably remember my vine, but don't recognize me. Look at them. Look at them. Ready? See? He's the goddamn kid. He's the the kid from the vine who said, you're disrespecting a future army soldier. Turned into one. He actually followed through and became a goddamn soldier. Can you believe it? And now you're now you're saying, okay, now we're gonna see what the basketball kid looks like now. Well, maybe that maybe so. Isn't this crazy, dude? Like how fucked up? How how many years have passed? Like, what's going on? This feels like this video was just uploaded a few years ago, and now he's like a fully grown adult. So whether it's true or not, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. But it's interesting. And I know I always say... Next episode (laughs) is going to be better than the last. But they never are. They really never are. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they are. I like having guests on. I've only had a couple so far. There might be another one coming on. I don't want to jinx it. But yeah. I I really want to push away from just talking about drama and news. I just want to talk about what I want to talk about. So I feel like from now on, this podcast is just going to be me talking about what I want to talk about. What interests me. No more drama. I'm done with it. I can't do it. It's not fun. Have you ever been on acid before? Have you ever tripped on acid? Because if you haven't, you don't know what it's like. And it's very hard to explain what it's like even on mushrooms but it's a wonderful experience it's very wonderful 
And so when I saw this vine, I was like, man, I got to save this because this is exactly, exactly what it's like to trip on, on psychedelics. When you transition from what the world actually looks like to what the world looks like on acid, it's indescribable. But this is a perfect visualization of what it's like, especially when you're in nature. There's music. There's music. I'll keep, I'll keep the music in. I don't care if I get claimed because it's just, it fits perfectly. Let me take you down Cause I'm going to Strawberry fields Wow! Wow! <laughs> That's real. what it's like, dude. That's what happens. That is exactly what happens. When you see people on acid and you're not on acid and they're just like, and they don't know where to go or what to do, that's because they're seeing this shit. And that's just the tipping point, okay? You can shit on drugs and psychedelics all you want. Like, look, I'm against meth and heroin and all that bullshit crack. But psychedelics, man, they unlock secrets, thoughts, mysteries that you would have never thought of or even realized you could even think of you have to experience it to know what i'm saying you'll sit there and you'll just come up with these ideas you'll start to understand life in minutes and then it all just goes away and you don't remember most of it but you remember it was like a revelation that happens We need, we need more people to use psychedelics. We need more people to come to these conclusions so that we don't fight and stress over the dumb little shit. We need to get over that and be a part of what really matters in life. And we need to stay that way because when we... When we understand what ha- really matters in life after uh, after wartime, that only lasts for so long. That only lasts for the generation that experienced it. Because the next following generations don't, they can't relate to it. But if you give them psychedelics, and if we find a way to make people immortal we can get somewhere because right now we're living in a time where we don't have enough technology or understanding of the universe to really uh, make everyone's lives comfortable on a daily basis You know, we look back to like the 1700s and the 1800s and we say, oh, those people, they must have had such a hard life. They were so racist and all this bullshit. And they were, and they did have a hard life. But people a thousand years from now are going to look back at our times and be like, look at these fucking morons. What were they doing? What the hell is wrong with these people? Like this guy. This is funny, but this guy. COVID-19! (laughs) COVID-19! Hey! (laughs) I'm blue! Cool. That was fun. That was fun. But what that guy's doing is not appropriate. What that guy's doing is he's manipulating people 
and making people pay him so that he can preach these insane ideologies on other people. And for those listening to this podcast, this is the portion of the show where you probably should be watching. You don't have to, because sometimes I forget to describe the videos that I'm showing. And some of the videos are just undescribable, like that acid trip video that I just showed. And if you're wondering how to find these videos on TikTok, their names are listed at the end of each clip, okay? Now, we all know that, um, what was I going to say? We all know that uh, the PS5 was released, the Xbox um, Series X, is that what it's called? That's released. But we also heard that GTA 5 is going to be released on the goddamn PlayStation 5. Okay. That means GTA 5 has been released on three separate consoles, three generations of consoles. The PS3, the PS4, the PS5. Same with the Xbox 360. Was it released on the PS3? Maybe it wasn't. But it was released on the Xbox 360 the Xbox One, and now the Xbox Series X, or whatever the fuck it's called. But these people that I'm about to show really capture the essence of a GTA cutscene. They do an excellent job. If you're familiar with GTA, you're going to like this. Let me just make sure this is centered. Okay. Yo, yo. So what's up? What's the plan? All right, so I managed to get a hold of the vans. Each van is going to have a group of three. So once we get to the bank, three are going to be in the front and three in the back. Got it? <laughs> what about the alarms? Don't even worry about that, man. My guy's got that all taken care of. Once he disables the alarm systems, that should give us a two-minute window before the cops get here. Should I be worried about the crew? Nah, got them all checked out. They're all rock solid. It's so true, dude. It's so true. Well, my contact managed to score some M4 and grenades. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Oh my god. All right, cool. Now we're just gonna wait until the getaway cars are in position. It's perfect. All right, I'm gonna pass the word along to Michael. I bet. I'm gonna head on over to the warehouse. <laughs> yeah. to get the crew, man. Got it. I'll unload the guns. And remember, stick to the plan. Make every second count. We can't afford to mess this up. You got it. All right, let's go make some money. <laughs> Perfect. That was so beautiful, dude. Again, audio listeners, you have to watch this. Strawberry fields. I'm definitely going to get claimed. Doesn't matter, though, because I don't make any money on this podcast. Doesn't fucking matter. I can't even believe I had shoe nice on the podcast. I had goddamn shoe nice on the podcast. I'm getting hungry, but we got a few more videos to watch. You know I like nostalgia. I miss the old days. I miss the early 2000s. For many reasons. One of the reasons is that no one canceled people over stupid shit on a daily basis. But also it was just like it was a simpler time. It was just like the perfect time. Things were just going nice. We didn't care about much. We didn't have Twitter and YouTube. We didn't have any social media. We had MySpace. But that was it. People were just figuring stuff out. You know, it was like the Wild West of the internet age is what I'm saying. People were just like doing what they wanted and making a little joke, I got a few followers, you know, like, having 10,000 subscribers on YouTube was, like, unheard of, it was insane, but I'm talking even earlier than that, like, the early 2000s, you'd pop in a VHS tape, but then you'd realize you didn't rewind it last time, so you gotta rewind the whole fucking thing, and you can either rewind it in the VCR, or you can take it out and put it into one of those cars that rewind the VHS. And you'd sit there and you'd wait. And you didn't have a phone to like sit there and scroll through Twitter 
while you're waiting for the VCR to rewind or the VHS to rewind. So you just talk to whoever you were watching the movie with. Or you would look out a window. Or you would just sit there and stare at it. (laughs) You would stare at the VHS tape rewinding. Or you'd look at the clock or something, you know? It was just... We had more patience. We had a lot of patience. And it was nice. It was beautiful. You gotta have time for yourself to just sit and think. It's very important. That's why meditation is so important. But no one does it. Everyone wants every second of their day to be filled with some sort of consuming of information. If you're waiting in line, you're on your phone. If you're in a cab, you're on your phone. Or an Uber, I should say. No one uses cabs anymore. Uber or Lyft, you're on your phone. Whenever there's not a moment you're not doing something, you're on your phone sucking up all this information you find on social media. And I've stopped using Facebook. And I'm considering stop using Twitter. I don't really use Instagram. I only use Instagram now to upload pro- promotional videos for my podcast. I've been using Twitter a lot over the past few months, but I'm thinking about not using that anymore. The only one I want to stick with is YouTube. Because YouTube's not a place where you just scroll and read stupid shit that people post about. You're subscribed to people who make videos, who take the time to come up with, you know, an edited, a properly produced, you know, a perfect... They perfect their content before they upload it. And it's not something you can quickly just read and move past it. you got to take the time to watch it. And that's another reason why I like podcasts so much. Sometimes they're three hours long, like especially Joe Rogan ones. And you just sit and watch and listen to a conversation. And it's beautiful. And people always tell me, like, how can you sit here and talk for that long People aren't going to sit there and watch it. And I'm like, I don't care if you don't want to watch it. This is what I'm making because this is what I enjoy. And there are people who enjoy what I enjoy. Podcasts are not for everyone. And a lot of people have a short attention span nowadays for a lot of reasons. The internet is the majority of the blame. But I just want to say, like, you know, back in when I was growing up, it was just, that's why I miss it so much. And you're going to miss the times you're growing up now. If you're young, if you're under 19 years old, whatever situation you're growing up in right now, you may not realize it, but when you get older, you're going to miss those times. It's just, it happens. Unless you're in a really, really shitty situation. I don't know. But, yeah. And so, like well, like I was saying, with the VHS, you would rewind it, and then you'd pop it in, and then this sound would play. And now this sound is nostalgia for anyone in my generation. It's a beautiful sound. It's a beautiful sound. And this is a funny video to kind of represent how we felt while we watched it. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Fantastic. The good old days, dude. We don't have the good old days anymore. No one's going to reminisce about 2020. Or maybe they will, because it might even be shittier. Who knows? People may look back at 2020 and be like, I miss the days where the only thing we cared about was a pandemic (laughs) and Black Lives Matter. Because who knows what the fuck's going to happen tomorrow. All right? Maybe there will be such a ginormous war where you can't even leave your house without fear of being shot or killed. We don't know. 
But what we do know is this. Beautiful. Very nice. Very nice execution. This this podcast might be a bit longer than I thought it would be, which is great. It's perfect. I wanted it to be closer to an hour than a half an hour. I've got two videos left. And I just want to reiterate that absolutely, from here on out, if I have to touch on something that I feel is important, I'll touch on it. But I just want to make the majority of these podcasts, you know, about things that I enjoy and things that I think are funny. Because that's what my intention of crew that, you know, that was my initial intention of this channel was to just make comedy. You know, I wanted to do skits because that was what you did back then and now it's evolved into this podcast and I'm I love this podcast more than anything well not more than anything but (laughs) you know it just this podcast is what I want to do more than anything I enjoy doing it I don't enjoy editing it because editing is a painful process but it's not too bad you know it's worth doing because in the end you're satisfied with what you created and I I just enjoy talking about specific topics especially when I'm a little bit baked on some cabinous yes it is pronounced cabinous okay don't tell me how to pronounce words And cannabis makes makes glass so filthy so quick. Just the amount of resin that builds up in these things, you know? There have been people who say I talk too slow. I don't, uh, you know, and I drag my podcast on too long. And at first I was like, yeah, you're, you're right. I talk too slow. I drag my shit on too long. But now I'm like, fuck that, dude. I've always talked slow. And yes, maybe, maybe my brain doesn't, uh, uh, you know, produce thoughts as fast as most people can. But I don't give a shit. Because I know the reason why I talk too slow is because I'm thinking constantly about what it is I want to say and how I want to say it. I don't want to come across wrong. I don't want to come across as an idiot. So I think about my words and I make sure I produce the proper words Especially when it comes to specific topics. And if you say I drag out my podcast too long, well then you obviously don't know what podcasts are. And I'm talking about people specific here and you know who you're ta- who I'm talking about. I'm not going to say any names. But the whole idea of a podcast is to have it be lengthy 
is to have it be uncut, is to have it be raw, is to have it be genuine, is to have it be a conversation. Because we don't do that anymore. And that is why podcasts are growing exponentially bigger and better than they ever have. Because we have a lack of it. And so when people get exposed to it, it's comforting and it makes them feel whole again. So that is why I do it, and that is why I will continue to do it until it is no longer cool, and then I'll move on to something else. Okay? So if you don't like my podcast, then I don't care. Yes, I joke about it's a shit podcast and it's garbage and gets no views, which is true. But I'm still going to continue to do it, and I'm still going to continue to do it my way. And, you know... If it never gets any views, I could give a fuck. Because I know as long as I do what I want to do, the way I want to do it, eventually it'll get the audience that I desire. Okay? And I don't care what advice you have for me. I mean, obviously I'll take advice. But it's not going to change the way I do things dramatically you know it is going to evolve and change over time but for the time being this is how i want to do it and this is how i envision the the success of this podcast going so ha let's watch another video this will make you laugh this will make you giddy <laughs> okay, that was wet. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Hold on, we gotta watch that one more time. This guy knows what's up. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, that was wet. Whoa! See, he loves it. He's so happy. He's figured something out. When he farts, if he does a little jitty, a little jiggy, a little jig, a little dance, he can make his fart sound really nice and funny and extra funny. Farts are so funny. I love a good fart. Farts are just really funny. Um... I realized I didn't play any sound bites it's been while I had my guests on. And it's been a while since I've used my sound board. Um. And I should have utilized it. They wouldn't have been able to hear it. But we would have heard it, and it would have made it that much more funnier. So next time I have a guest on, it might have to be the next next time, I will, or even if I have a guest on, I'm trying I'll definitely utilize the sound bites for sure. Did rednecks kill your folks? It's really different filming with guests than when it's just me. Because I'm I'm I feel pressured to keep the conversation going. And again, I've only done like two or three so far. Technically four, but um and so, yeah, I'm constantly like, okay, I'm thinking, I'm constantly thinking about what's the next question I'm going to ask while they're talking. And so sometimes I get distracted focusing on the next question that I, I actually uh, zone out from what they're saying. <laughs> and I'm, I think I noticed like in the last two, I kind of like asked a question where they had already like just answered it. But, you know, I'm still learning. I'll figure it out. I kind of want to make it more conversation-like and less focused on exactly the questions I want to ask. I'd rather just feed off of what they're saying, which is kind of what I was doing, but it was still more interviewee like I want to make it more relaxed and calm and just flow. Just go with the flow, you know? 
I was too focused on getting getting the questions out that I wanted to get out and then wrapping it up right away, which it that shouldn't be my focus. So when I have another guest on, I'll try to do that. And that excludes the following episode, which may or may not have a guest. And I won't get into why. <laughs> okay. Let's watch the final video. This is a kid straight out of surgery. Looks like it might be uh, wisdom teeth surgery, which these are always funny. So let's check it out. Do you know what all those things are? Nice. <laughs> You see, okay, so if you let's watch it again, but pay attention to the monitor. Do you know what all those things are? Nice. <laughs> He's increasing his heart rate, or whatever. I don't. Is that that might is that his heart rate? Whatever it is, he's increasing a number on the screen. So it gets to 69. <laughs> and then he points to it and says, nice. And if you notice, once it gets to 69, he like holds it there. So I don't know if this could be fake. If it is fake, excellent job. But if it's not fake, I don't know how exactly he did this. Just listen. Listen to the beeping. When it gets to 69, it stops. Do you know what all those things are? Nice. See? Like there was a consistent beep. 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 And then when it gets to 69, his mother says something. Or his girlfriend or whoever. And then, you know, he, he pu pu goes up there and points to it and says nice. And during that whole time, the beeping stops. Let's watch it one more time. Do you know what all those things are? Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic, ladies and potheads. Or gentlemen. Well, we yeah, we did a pretty decent decently length episode today. Um talked a lot about what I wanted to talk about. Said what I wanted to say. I really enjoy doing this podcast by myself. I love having guests on because it helps promote the show and whatnot. But I really enjoy doing it by myself when I do. And yeah, I guess that's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell notification. You know the drill. I don't have to say it. I say it all the time. Just like every other YouTuber. And I never wanted to be the YouTuber who says those things. But it's part of the game. So I do it. Anyway, with that being said, hope to see you in the next one. And I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>